Chapter 4 is called Froze Up Southern Folks. Because she'd been born in Alabama, Mama didn't really know anything about the cold. Even though she lived in Flint for 15 years, she still thought cold weather could kill you in a flash. That's why me and Joey were the warmest kids at Clark Elementary School. Mama wouldn't let us go out on a cold winter day unless we were wearing a couple of t-shirts, a couple of sweaters, a couple of jackets, and a couple of coats. Plus gigantic snow pants that hung on your shoulder by suspenders. Plus pockets and big black shiny rubber boots that close with five metal buckles. Can you imagine wearing that much clothes here? Yeah, that's like, in a, that's like in a Christmas story. We're all, yes, we would burn up here. We wore so many clothes that when we pulled our final coat on, we couldn't. We could barely bend our arms. We wore so many clothes that while Byron wasn't around, the other kids said stuff like, here come some of them weird Watsons doing their mummy imitations. But the worst part of this was having to take all this stuff off once we got to school. It was my job to make sure Joey got out of her coats and things okay. So after I took all my junk off, I went down to the kindergarten and started working on hers. Joey usually looked like a little zombie while I peeled the coats and jackets off of her. She got so hot inside all the coats and jackets. Uh, she got so hot inside all this stuff that when I finally got down to the last layer, she'd be soaking wet and kind of drowsy looking. I took her hood off and unwrapped the last scarf that was around her head. When that last scarf came off, there was always a real nice smell. Like Joey was a little oven. And inside all those clothes, she baked up her own special perfume with the smell of shampoo and soap and the pomade Mama put in her hair. That was the only part I didn't mind. I loved sticking my nose right on top of Joey's head and smelling all those nice things baked together. Mama always kept a little towel in Joey's last, um, last jacket pocket so I could make sure her face and her hair were dry. Kenny, she said one time, while I wiped the sweat from her forehead, can't you do something to stop Mommy from making us get so hot? I tried, Joey. Mama thinks she's protecting us from the cold. I started trying to get Joey's shoes out of her boots. Whoever invented these boots should be shot, because once the boots got a hold of your shoe, they wouldn't let them go for anything. I pulled everything off Joey's foot and gave her the boot while I reached my hand inside to tug on the shoe. We pulled and pulled, but it seemed like the harder we pulled, the harder the boot sucked the shoe back in. Maybe Byron will help make Mommy stop if we let him know how hot we get. Joey was too young to understand that Byron didn't care anything about anything except for himself. He was kind of nice to her, though, and didn't treat her like he treated me and the other kids. We tugged and tugged, and the shoe started coming out an inch at a time. Finally, it made that funny sound like water going down the drain and slid right out of the boot. Woo! I tied Joey's shoes back on her feet and used her towel to wipe my own forehead. I couldn't wait until I was old enough to not listen to what Mama told me. The next morning, Mama was burying Joey in all her clothes again. Joey was doing the usual whining and complaining. Mommy, can't I just wear one, one jacket? I get too hot. And besides that, I'll wear all this junk. I'm the laughing stock of the morning kindergarten. Mama's hand came up to cover her mouth. But she's got serious when she said, Joey, I don't want you to be the laughing sock, but I don't want you catching a cold. You've got to keep bundled up out there. It's colder than you think. This cold is very dangerous. People die in it all the time. Joey pouted and said, well, 
if they die in it all the time, how come we don't see any frozen people when we go to school? <laughs> Mama gave Joey a funny look and pulled her head over her head. Her hood over her head. Sweetheart, do what Mommy says. It's better to be too warm than too cold. Joey whined a little more while Mama put her boots on her. Me and Byron went outside and waited on the porch. He was trying to look cool, but I said to him anyway, Man, I hate taking all that stuff off, Joey, when we get to school. The whines and cries the whole time. I stood next to him and looked at him sideways. Seems to me like you got a real bad memory. Who do you think took all that stuff off your little behind all these years? What goes around, comes around. I was surprised he said anything. Since Byron thought it was too cool not to answer stuff when someone younger than him said it. But he wasn't being completely nice. While I was talking, he kept moving around me. So if I wanted to look at him sideways, I'd have to move. I must have looked like we were doing some kind of square dance with the moving around like one foot was nailed to the porch. Yeah, but I didn't cry and whine. Byron kept circling me and putting his hand behind his ear. What? I know you didn't say what I think you said. You were the cryingest little clown there ever was. With Byron walking around me like we came, we must have looked like we were in the wild west and I was in a wagon train and Byron was the Indian circling waiting to attack. Byron changed directions and started going around the other way and I acted like my other foot was nailed to the ground. And I started following him sideways that way. I knew there wasn't much point in saying a whole bunch more to him. So I said mostly to myself, Man, I hate listening to Joey whining. When I take all that junk off of her at school, Well, listen here, he said. I'm going to help you out. I know it's kind of stupid to think that someone who's teasing you by going around in circles is going to help you out. But I said to him anyway, How? He kept going around and around and around me. I bet we looked like a solar system with me being the sun and Byron orbiting the earth. I'll talk to Joey, you know, kind of put her mind at ease. This didn't sound too good, and I got sick of by teasing me, so I let the earth orbit by itself. Joey finally came out, and the three of us started walking toward the bus stop. Byron started right in. Baby sis, I know you don't like wearing all them clothes, right? Right, Byron? They get too hot? Yeah, I'm hip. But you know there's a good reason why you gotta have all that stuff on. Why? Only me and Kenny wear this much junk. Yeah, but what you don't know is that Mama's only doing what's right. There's something she don't want you two to know yet. But I know you some real mature kids. So I'm going to tell you anyway. Okay, all right, tell us. I wanted to know too. Even though I was in fourth grade, I feel for a lot of the stuff Byron came up with. He made everything seem real interesting and important. All right, but when Mama finally do tell you guys this stuff, you got to act like you're surprised. Deal? Both me and Joey said, deal. Byron looked around to make sure no one was listening. Walk in place. Then said, have you ever noticed early in the morning, some of the time, you wake up and you hear garbage trucks? Yeah. Have you ever noticed how when you get up and go to school, you almost never see them trucks? Yeah. And have you ever noticed how when you do see one of them trucks, it's got a real big door in the back of it that opens and shuts and you can't see what's inside? Yeah. And have you ever noticed that door is too big for even the biggest garbage can in the whole world? Yeah. Hey, Joey, did you notice how Mama got kind of nervous and didn't answer your question about not seeing people being froze up on the street? Yeah? Byron looked around and made us get real close to him. Okay now, 
this is the part you're going to have to look surprised at when mama tells you about it. But before I tell you, you're going to have to practice acting surprised so I don't get in any trouble for letting you know. Okay? Yeah. Kenny, you first. I made my eyes get real big and threw my mouth open. Not bad, but try it with some sound. I made my eyes get real big, threw my mouth open and said, What the? Oh, perfect, yeah. perfect. Baby sis, your turn. Joey did exactly what I did. That's good, but I think we need some action. Do all that stuff and throw your hands up like you just heard some real shocking stuff. We did. Cool. Now do it together. Three times. Go. What the? What the? What the? Oh my gosh. I didn't just like, would have been like, what the heck? I don't know. All right. Um, you see, some of them trucks ain't real garbage trucks at all. Joey, you was right. Every cold morning like this, the streets is full of dead froze people. Some of the time, they freeze so quick they don't even fall down. They just stand there froze solid. Joey was believing every word. I wasn't too sure, but you notice that not everybody gets froze like that. It's just because them folks from down south who got the, this thin, down-home blood who freeze so quick. And you know my man from Flint. She grew up in Alabama. And that means half of y'all's blood is real thin. So mama's worried that one morning it's going to be cold enough to freeze you all. That's when the fake garbage trucks come in. Every morning they go around picking up froze folks off the street. And they need them big doors because someone who got froze, don't bend in the middle. And they wouldn't fit at no regular ambulance. We're not doing that, please. Joey looked like she was hypnotized. Her mouth open and her eyes were bugging. But both of you got to swear, never ever to try and look in the back of one of those trucks. I did it once, and I'm going to tell you, there ain't nothing more horrible than seeing hundreds of dead, froze up people. Southern folks crammed up inside a garbage truck. It's a sight that I'm going to carry to my grave with me. So, Joey, don't be crying and whining when you put all them clothes on. It would break my heart to see my own family froze solid. So they got thrown into one of them fake garbage trucks. And Joey started crying. Byron told me, Give my regards to Clark, Boy and Dexter, and left me there to wipe Joetta's tears. I gotta admit, Joey didn't do any more whining when she had to get into her winter clothes. The only good thing about Mom being afraid of the cold was that we were the only kids at Clark who got to wear real leather gloves. Let's see. All right, I'm gonna stop right there for today. So even though. Spend half the time screaming what the? <laughs>